What's going on guys? So in this video, we're gonna be covering the fragrances that I ended up wearing the most this summer. Some of these were in some of my summer lists. Some of these, I just randomly ended up wearing a lot more than I realized I was even wearing them, to be honest with you. Some are newer acquisitions, some I've had for a little while, but just some may surprise you. Some I've really been wearing a lot in the last several weeks, so they were able to make this video pretty easily. I want to talk to you about them because for most people, it's getting to the point to where summer weather, as long as you're not in the Gulf Coast anyways, summer weather's starting to subside in a lot of places, so uh, it's time to talk about it. Stay tuned. Starting with probably my favorite pickup that's ideal for summer this year, it's my Sony Wave. I wore this one to the gym several times, I wore it casually, I've worn it out the shower, I've worn it for a bunch of different things over the summer. It's just a beautiful creamy Chanel Allure Sport type of fragrance. A little bit of citrus, aquatic, clean and a little soapy. There's a sweetness here, there's a light floral tone. There's a lot going on here without it smelling like a very deep fragrance at the same time. Beautiful stuff, easy going, decent performer, can be found for cheap. I absolutely love this fragrance, I adore it. I spoke on this one quite a bit throughout the last several months uh, of having it. I've worn it many times, that's why it's in this video in the first place. And this was kind of the, I guess the best choice to start the video with because this is the one that I kept harping on all summer about how much I enjoy. And I still feel that way, this stuff just makes me happy every time I smell it. Like I said, performance is above average, nothing weak here. It's nothing super deep, but it's not a basic scent. It doesn't smell cheap to me and can be found anywhere from the mid and low 30s on up to about $50, depending on where you find it from discounters online or in rack stores. If you haven't got your nose in this one yet, in my opinion, you're definitely missing out. I'm a Sony Wave. Next, this was a bit newer to the collection. At first, I was excited about it when it started hitting rack stores. Then I heard some underwhelming things about it. And I kind of was like, eh, I'll grab it when I when I see it. And eventually I did see it. I wore the hell out of it for about a solid two weeks. I wore Cool Water Grapefruit and Sage a lot. For a good two-week stretch, I was going back to this over and over and over. Very creamy type of citrus. Of course, it's a sage bomb. It has that slight bubblegum, light, fresh, spicy aromatic tone to it that sage is known for as it starts to settle down it does get a little bit more musky but it's pretty straightforward minus changing out some of that creamy citrus it's a creamy grapefruit smell it's very strange it's pleasant just a little different you transition from a little bit of that citrus to kind of swapping it out for some light clean musk in the dry down so it doesn't change much performance is actually very good for me you can find this one in the mid 20s up to about 40 bucks depending on which rack store you find it at i found it at marshall's for 26.99 for 125 ml and i absolutely love this stuff i did a full review on it not that long ago within the last few weeks i did a full review just really really been enjoying this one it's nothing groundbreaking and special if you have cool water intense there's going to be some redundancy here they do have a similar type of scent profile not exactly the same but very similar. It's not quite the beast of Cool Water Intense either, but uh, it's kind of like Cool Water Intense Light. I know that's weird because I said intense and light, but because it smells similar to it and it's not quite as strong, but I think it's a pretty damn good fragrance for the money. I definitely ended up wearing it a lot for a certain stretch during the summer. It's Davidoff Cool Water, Grapefruit and Sage. This one has kind of been my go-to for the gym. Um, it's the gym fragrance I've worn the most this summer. It is Kenneth Cole Blue. Basically a cheaper Versace Mano Fresh in many ways. This is orange, sea notes, and maybe like a woody note or a musky note or something like that. It's synthetic. It's a little bit on the sharp side, but it's pleasant and enjoyable. Very clean fragrance. Not a really strong performer. It fits the bill completely for what I like to wear to the gym. This is a superstar for a gym bag type of fragrance. I love this stuff for it. That's pretty much what I bought it for. I had a bottle of this in the past. I do have a backup 
one ounce bottle that's sealed that came in a bonus pack with this 50 ml so um, it's one that I'll continue to go back to I'm sure because it's just kind of an easy reach dumb dumb reach grab and go type of fragrance for the gym because I go to the gym at least five days a week most of the time a little bit more than that usually about six days a week so stuff like this I reach for all the time I actually started a monthly gym rotation video format because I have that's that's a thing for me it matters to me so I figured I'd make a video out of it but this is the one I've been wearing the most throughout the summer um, it's a close race there's some I've been kind of rotating out recently that we'll discuss at the end of the month in that video but during the summer this was definitely the gym bag fragrance that I was spraying the most you haven't tried this one yeah not saying you're missing out but it's decent kind of cold blue this one was a pretty new acquisition. Um, I don't think it's the greatest fragrance in the world for the summer, but it definitely works in the season. But it's one of my favorite blue fragrances that I've smelled in some time. Rocha Sloam. This is another one that I've talked about countless times throughout this particular summer. On into the, the fall videos that I've been doing as of late. Because this is just so good. Juniper Geranium, Fresh Greens, Light Woods. Doesn't smell cheap, but I paid $30 for it. This is a great signature scent fragrance. This is awesome for workplace setting. This can dress up. This is a great casual fragrance at the same time. I deem it to be great three seasons, spring, summer, fall, but you can even wear this one in the winter if you want to, if you want something that airs on the fresher side for very cold weather, which I'm sure at some point this winter coming, I'll spray this one at least once or twice. I'll wear it. It's great stuff, guys. I'll continue to recommend this one because this is an absolute bargain and steal in men's fragrances for the $30 to $40 price bracket. It's it's undefeated, in my opinion. I can't really think of a $30 to $40 fragrance at discounters that I really think is better than this. I mean, some that are on par with how much I enjoy them. Obviously, it's just my opinion, but I think this can do it all. This is one of the best fragrances out there, in my opinion especially in the price bracket. And I ended up wearing it a pretty good bit this summer. I did a full review on it also. It's Rocha Sloan. This is probably the last version of this fragrance most people would think of for the summertime. But I don't know. I just kept enjoying it. There was a stretch of a few weeks in a row where it was in the weekly rotation. I'm talking about Dior Sauvage Parfum. This is my big 200 milliliter bottle. The Parfum of all things is the version of Sauvage I wore the most this summer. I didn't wear Elixir but maybe one time. I think I wore its clones more than the original. A couple of times this summer. Wore the EDT maybe once. EDP, I definitely wore at least once. But this, I wore about a handful or so of times. God, this smells so good. It's still my favorite version of Sauvage. That's why I'm so glad it's the biggest bottle of Sauvage that I have. It's a 200 milliliter bottle. What I paid for this, you can't even come close to getting 200 ml for these days. I got this for 130 something a few years ago on FragranceNet with a great deal. And uh, now, I think the last time I saw it on Fragrance Net with 37% off, it was like right around $200. So, super happy to have this. It's like a lifetime supply of Sauvage Parfum for me. That's one of the reasons I reach for it more is because I have so much of it. But it's also my favorite scent profile. There's a little bit of citrus. It's got this resinous, smoky tone to it from this olibanum that's in here. You still have that aromatic touch to it with some lavenders, a little bit of wood. It's got a little bit of spice, but not much. There's some sweetness in the backdrop, but I wouldn't call this a very sweet fragrance either. Um, it's kind of pretty well balanced, smooth and polished, kind of a more matured take on Sauvage's DNA because you do smell the Ambroxan even though it's not listed. It is there. It is in the backdrop. I don't care what anybody says. I smell a little bit of Ambroxan in here. Um, but surprisingly, I kept reaching. Once I pulled this one out of its box and put it on my rotation table, it has not left my rotation table in months because even if I don't spray it, I end up smelling it out the atomizer, but I wore this one actually more than I realized this particular summer. Dior Sauvage Parfum. I don't know why I kept reaching for this one this summer. It was kind of my travel fragrance of choice. Um, even though I did wear the EDP as my in my most recent travel, but throughout the summer, I did a good bit of traveling, and I was rolling with Raja Parfum's Oligarch Parfum, the discontinued fragrance that is just... So absolutely fantastic, in my opinion. It's got a dense, kind of sweet citrus, mouth-watering in the top. The greens are a little bit denser here. There's a little bit more of a spice than in the EDP. It's not as bright. The woods, it's just a thicker fragrance overall. Siage lingers. It's dense. It's beautiful. Um, this is one that the first time I smelled it, I thought, you know, the EDP is still better. And then up until, like, 
a week and a half ago, I hadn't sprayed the EDP since. I kept going for this one. I actually love the EDP, but I love this one a little bit more. If I had to pick just one, it would be the Parfum. And it's not just because of any enhanced performance, because they're kind of, there's not really a big difference in performance. The other one's just a little brighter in the top. They both last a really long time. But this one, I don't know, the way the blend is with the scent profile and the heightened oil concentration, it just comes out to a scent profile that just pleases my senses a little bit more. Um, unfortunately, this is one you can't find without, you know, betting the farm, I guess, if you're going to buy it from a reseller because it's not on the market for one reason or another. But I'm definitely happy to have a bottle. I love wearing this stuff. It is fantastic. It's kind of the Roger Parfums fragrance I've been wearing the most this year overall. I don't know if it'll be... The most worn by the end of the year, but for the summer, it was definitely my most worn. From Roger Parfums, Oligarch Parfum. So in the last few weeks, I have wore this fragrance probably a dozen times. I keep going back to it. It is Bulgari Man Glacial Essence. Those of you that have been watching recent videos or week, recent weekly rotations, you know this to be fact. I just keep going back to it. I don't know why. And I actually filmed a review. Funny story. I filmed a review at the recording of this yesterday. I went to edit it before filming this video and noticed that I did not turn the audio on from a microphone. So I filmed an entire review with no audio. So I gotta reshoot the, the review for this. But the summary on this one is it's nothing special, but it's super enjoyable to wear because it literally can work for anything and everything no matter where you're going, what you're wearing, or what the temperature is like inside or outside, I feel like this works for everything. Uh, Underappreciated fragrance in the community. Not the cheapest fragrance, but not the most expensive from discounters. I paid around 60 bucks from Kingdom Fragrances a while back, and I love wearing this one. Out the shower, it don't, it don't matter casually, whatever. I'm sure it's a great work fragrance as well. It's, it's just easy going. This clear wood note provides this soft woody tone. It's a little bright, airy, soft and powdery, a little creamy. It's got a little bit going for it here. Like I said, it's not. It's very inoffensive, but very enjoyable to wear. In the last few weeks, this is the fragrance I've worn the most in the last few weeks. It's Bulgari Man Glacial Essence. So this juice level will show you how much I've been wearing this one. I wear it out the shower um, because I a lot of the times because I have the shave set for it. So when I rock you know roll with the soap bar and then the shave set I spray the fragrance I've worn it casually I've worn it to travel I've taken it on vacation with me it's just it's just a great fragrance for the heat Zaharoff signature citrine this summer release from Zaharoff beautiful sweet orange clementine resinous ambery woody a little sweet citrus going on here it's just gorgeous. The sillage on this is beautiful. It does need the heat though. If you're looking for performance out of this fragrance, your skin needs to heat up. You need to put it in the right setting. It is situational. If you're gonna be indoors and in the air conditioning all day, not really gonna project much. Longevity, that's gonna depend on your skin chemistry. I actually get pretty lo good longevity out of this. Six to eight hour range. Every time I spray it, usually kind of smack dab in the middle, right about seven hours. Uh, but if you go outdoors and you start sweating, you get into an activity, whatever, this stuff will start pumping off the skin, at least in my experience. That's where you really start getting some projection and a good sillage from this one. Uh, definitely get a sample and try this one if you haven't yet. It is the only true fresh fragrance from Zaharoff. Still has that classy edge. Everything you've come to expect from Zaharoff. One of my most worn for sure. This whole dent came from this summer. Zaharoff Signature Citrine. Next, I just wore this one within the last few days. It is officially my favorite yuzu fragrance. If you're looking for a great long-lasting yuzu and herbal tea fragrance, you might want to check out Gentleman's Nod. This is Musashi, their first release. They have a new release out now called Ernest. This is definitely a bit more fresh. There's two, maybe even three different, I want to say two for sure, herbal tea notes. Um, and there's also, I want to say an oolong tea and I forgot the other, I can't remember off the top of my head, but the main things that are going to stick out to you is the yuzu. There's some other citrus going on, but the yuzu kind of takes over after about 15 or 20 minutes because the yuzu stays pretty much the entirety of the fragrance the whole life. You're going to get this beautiful, beautiful juiced yuzu smell. And like I said, you have that herbal green, relaxing tea freshness, some aromatics. Of course, there's some light woods in the backdrop on the base. 
not really a heavily musky fragrance, but there's a little bit of musk there. Even a little touch of amber in the background. This is beautiful. It's not very sweet. Really like this one. The more I wear it, the more I like it. And I didn't realize how often I actually wore it. I did a full review on this one earlier in the summer. This is really, really good stuff. Like I said, they have a new one out called Ernest that's fruity, fresh, tobacco, and woody. But as far as summer freshies, it's one of the best long-lasting summer fresh fragrances I wore this year. I like this stuff. And if you're looking for fresh for the cold, this will cut through it. It's 27% oil concentration, so it definitely has the staying power and a decent sillage for sure. Check this one out. Get a sample if you haven't tried it yet. This is Gentleman's Nod, Musashi. Last but not least, this is the one that uh, was on the chopping block with, with two other fragrances for which one had the most wearings to make the video because uh, this was towards middle of summer that I got it and then another fragrance came out from the house and then another fragrance came out from the house so I started spending time with the other ones. But City Rhythm Fragrance, San Diego Pacific Sunset. This is a gorgeous daytime wear. Even though it's themed after the evenings, it's beautiful in the daytime. Whew. And you want some performance? This is a 50% oil concentration. So... <laughs> It's got performance to boot. This has a salty sea breeze smell that is so beautiful. There's a beechwood note. There's sea salt in here. There's aquatic notes. I believe there's some violet leaf as well. There's some earthy floral tones to this. A little bit of citrus in the top. There's a little bit of like sugary sweetness, but it's very light and faint. And then the backdrop, this stuff is really, really good. Has kind of an ambery feel as it dries with that beech wood salty sea breeze smell. Dry down's gorgeous on this one. Opening's nice. Dry down's amazing. This was until 2654 came out. This was my favorite. So 2654 is a combination of this and Miami Tropical Seduction. So it takes the best of both worlds and makes it into one fragrance. So that hybrid fragrance is officially my current favorite from the house. But as a standalone that it's, it's its own blend, this is the highlight of the house in my opinion. This is my favorite individualistic fragrance from the house. I have to say that because my actual favorite's a blend of this and another fragrance. I follow my train of thought here. I know I'm kind of going all over with the way I'm saying this, but had I gotten that one sooner, that would have took this one's place. Uh, they almost had the same amount of wearings. I wore this one a little bit more. Um, if I had got them both at the beginning of the summer, probably 2654 would be here in this spot, but not going to take away anything from this. Niles doesn't miss. He hasn't put out a bad fragrance yet. Uh, I'm waiting for him to put one out so I can give him a hard time about it, but he hasn't done it yet, so definitely get some samples, try some of the stuff from City Rhythm. Highly unlikely you'll be disappointed. I mean, not everybody likes everything. I'm sure you're not going to like every fragrance from the house, but you're bound to find something you like if you like these city themes, you like performance, and you like originality. Check out City Rhythm Fragrance and definitely get a sample of San Diego Pacific Sunset because it's what I wore the most this summer. Well, that is the 10 fragrances that I wore the most this summer. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. What you guys wear the most this year? Because uh, like I said, in some of my summer lists, yeah, some of these fragrances were in there. And then some of them, I don't know, for one reason or another, they got on my rotation table and never left and kept randomly going back to them or stuff I recently got that, you know, was well after my summer list, and was, I just started wearing them all the time, like Bulgari Man Glacial Essence and Davidoff Cool Water Grapefruit and Sage, you know, it's, I just started wearing the hell out of those randomly, but until next time, I will say, if you get your hands on any of the 10 I wore the most this summer, and you give them a spray now, pretty confident you'll thank me later, because, I mean, it's what I wore the most this summer. Have a good one, guys. Mm -hmm.